Chicago, it's uh, it's a street fair. It's right in the middle of the city. So I, uh, I usually uh, I'll sell a lot of working people who don't have a lot to spend. So like I fall right in their price range. How are we doing there? Take my five. Five? Did I tell you about the special on six? <laughs> Two for ninety. Hey, hey, look what else I got. Look at the bigger one. These are three hundred. No. No? Is it something about the price? Yes. You got a card? We don't give out cards here. We just make sales, give receipts. Yeah, but how do people then later if they want to uh, like Later, that? if they want their money back, they oh, can't yeah. find me. That's almost me. Almost me. Well, I'll, I'll work harder next time. So do you just go on a like tour? A tour, yes. You never go home? Since my wife left, what reason is there to go home? How long ago did she leave? 20 years ago. And because they live in the inner city, they're bitter. So my stuff, uh, the cynicism uh, of it appeals to them. But usually I, I do pretty good. I don't. Sometimes I'll sell like a big piece. Because there'll be people from out of town because that's a, a locale where they expect to find uh, uh, some good art. And it's the home of uh, outsider art, you know, cutting edge stuff. So I'm the kind of work that they're looking for. Part of what, uh, what I am uh, is because I was born here in Chicago. I grew up in the suburbs, but uh, this is my area, so I, uh, if I'm going to find people who, who understand me and my work, it's going to be here. If I'm going to be understood, it, it's going to be here, if I'm ever going to be understood. It's a, sort of a symbolic uh, spot for me in my career. I'm an art historian, but I want to tell you that this art is extraordinary for many provenance reasons. Um, if you look at the people in this piece of art, you'll realize this is why you don't want to be a docent, because they do not get it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, irreverent art. I think it's very interesting, because when you go to art festivals, most of the stuff is Me Too stuff. It's the same old unoriginal crap. So we hang them in our house, and my guests come over and stand silent in front of these pictures and look at me, look at the art. Their funniest reaction is complete silence. It has kind of a... You know, offbeat, uh, almost a malicious kind of a sense of humor. We just got back from a show where we saw the original um, picture of this, and the original picture is very shocking and sad and makes you think about war and its repercussions. I mean, people even hang this picture in their room just to just remember, like, the inhumanities of people, and then to make it something funny and kind of comical, it's, it's, it's almost, uh, it's, disturb it's more disturbing in a way. It's very bizarre. And that's why I was just attracted to it right away. It's, I like the juxtaposition of the, the modern and the old and the very weirdness of it. It's just hysterically funny. And this guy sitting here sleeping. I mean, it's very funny. This guy here with his cigarette, that's hysterical. And it's just so creative. And also even just the little intimate things of the ketchup on the table. There's just so much going on that it's just you could just study it for a very long time. It's the very good blend of the modern and the, uh, and the Renaissance art. He only likes modern stuff, and I really only like old masters, and so in a really sick, twisted way, we've come up with a very good compromise. It'll offend all the neighbors in Newton, Massachusetts, but we think they're great. Okay, here's what we bought today. The inner child confrontation. Actually, this is my husband's favorite. Um, he's a little concerned about having it hanging in our house because there's a machine gun. But I thought, if we, you know, when we have a kid, it would go really nicely in a baby's room, maybe above the crib or something. We got the Grand Jot by Surratt, you know, the Mr. Dot artist, okay? What is this telling me anyway? It's telling me that Surratt was mentally ill because he did all those dots and he probably lost his mind. But what a great car the VW is. I did pretty well for that spot. I did okay. And it was, uh, it was a nice ambiance. I like the, uh, the energy of the, uh, of the pulsation of the city. It's a tense uh, environment. It's, uh, people are uh, forced to uh, do things when uh, the environment is uh, fast moving. Ever since I was a small child, I envisioned uh, sitting out here on the steps of the Art Institute selling uh, uh, crude paintings that I had done. Uh, for just a few dollars so I could get more liquor to drink. I thought that would be my career. 
A lot of people say, well, your art should be hanging in a museum. It should be uh, out here in the middle of the street at a, an art fair. I have sort of a love-hate uh, relationship with uh, uh, museum pieces. If you put a piece in a museum, people can't touch it. They have to stand back from it. They can't really, uh, I don't know, get up close and relate to it on a, a personal basis, not like they own it. So uh, I decided a long time ago to make, uh, make my stuff affordable so people could uh, take it home with them um, and relate to it in their own uh, environment. You know, it'd be nice to have stuff in a museum. It looks good on your resume. But uh, I don't know. It, it, it seems a little bit undemocratic. I like to be just... Uh, one of the family. I think my work belongs in a museum. Well, yeah. If uh, your work's in a museum, your uh, people will try to understand you or accept you as an artist. I go into a museum and uh, I get a bunch of whole different emotions. You know, first emotion I guess is, well, I should be in here. Uh, second is uh, most of these guys are dead, didn't make any money, and the guys who made money are the guys who sold them to the museum. That someday, you know, when they find my decomposed body uh, in a Skid Row apartment, you know, once they're, uh, they get over the smell of the, uh, of the festering flesh, they'll find all my original works uh, scattered about. When I'm dead, I'll have accomplished my main goal was to be recognized as um, someone who had uh, an insight beyond the common man. The thing that I'm impressed about, to me, as a student of people's minds and, and society, it is, to me, what art is, it should be about. It's about stimulating a message and calling our attention to something. I really connected with uh, Barry, and I really could connect with what he was trying to portray, which is that, hey, let's wake up, let's take a look at these things. And to me, that is exciting art. Maybe a, a good number of his works someone wouldn't uh, put on their walls. So what's the purpose of a museum? A museum should be a place where we can go and we can see works that communicate to us in a special way that we won't be able to see any other, in any other place. They could be controversial, they could be shocking, they could be upsetting. But what a better place to have works by this particular artist than a museum or galleries because maybe people aren't going to necessarily put them on their walls. Anyway, until they hang me on their walls, I just have to find a sidewalk nearby and, uh, and sit outside and uh, try to get a few bucks from people uh, who appreciate what a, what a real artist is. So I look forward to suffering. I think it brings out the, uh, the pathos in my work. And there's nothing like uh, setting your stuff out on the street at a show and then having a big tornado come and uh, blow it all away or a big rainstorm or a hailstorm come and, and ruin half your pieces and blow your canopy down. My kind of town, Chicago is. What are you looking at?